after the Jays victory in the opening game of the series last night and a look at the lineup you know all about two three four Devers Martinez Bogarts let's not sleep on the guy in the fifth spot of the lineup Alex Verdugo he's pesky he can grind out some at bats and he's on a pretty impressive eight game hitting streak right now as the Red Sox get a look at Ross Stripling tonight for the Blue Jays. Blue Jays have won six of the eight games they have played against the Red Sox this season and it all starts on the mound. The great starting pitching the Blue Jays have gotten in those eight games. Blue Jays starters are 4 0 with a microscopic 106 earned run average in those eight games. Ross Stripling has faced the Red Sox one time already this year picked up a no decision against the Sox but he did pitch well five innings just one run in that game last time out against the White Sox that was last Wednesday gave up a run in six innings and he also threw a season high 87 pitches in that game we'll watch this one he'll probably push on through that if he has some pretty easy innings tonight. But uh, this is a big uh, this is a big test for him today against the Red Sox. They've been tough on him in the past. He has finished his warm up tosses and we are ready to go here at the ballpark. Nick Marley is the home plate umpire. And you can see the former Blue Jay Rob Ref Snyder just settling into the box right now. The Blue Jays will have the shift on against Ref Snyder. And away we go here at the ballpark with a fastball in there for strike one call. Well I'll tell you Mother Nature has cooperated more often than not over the last several weeks here with the weather another beautiful night. Slider misses outside one and one. And that's the pitch that Ross used a little bit more in that last outing against the White Sox. He's basically a fastball slider change up curveball he can sink the fastball or four seam it but that slider was good for him last time. So he tries it again misses down and away two balls and a strike. Stripling with significantly or noticeably better numbers as a starter than as a reliever this year in terms of ERA opponents batting average strikeout to walk ratio you name it. Foul back two and two and it's the consistent work. When you talk to him and you ask him about that about starting and you ask him about relieving relieving there's just so many things that come into play when am I going to pitch as a starter he can get into a routine he knows every fifth day he's going to be on on that mound. That's been a big pitch for him in recent weeks that change up as he misses down and in with it three and two. Tonight is Ross's 190th major league appearance 100 in relief and this is his 90th big league start. Line to right and that's going to drop for a base hit for Ref Snyder. Ref Snyder with the game's first base hit. Let's take a look at the defense for the Blue Jays tonight. Lotus Gurriel out in the outfield along with Tapia and Teoscar. Bichette, Espinal up the middle, Guerrero and Chapman in their usual positions at first and third base. Gabby Moreno behind the plate. And Matt Chapman, the last time that Ross Stripling was on the mound against Chicago, he went in and told him, hey, feed me the ball. <laughs> Get a lot of ground balls. He made four great plays in the first four innings. They had seven right-handed batters in that lineup, and he was busy early. Here's Rafael Devers. He was thinking about well he was doing more than thinking about it he was trying to bunt for a base hit but he bunted right through it. A player not used to doing that go ahead and do that he did that in last night's game his first time up just to try and draw Matt Chapman in. But after this attempt Matt is not going to fall for that one Chappie is back again. And this is a guy who was swinging the bat as well as anybody in baseball so. If he's going to try to do something he's not comfortable doing the Blue Jays will happily accept that now a one and one count on Devers who is hitting 333 17 home runs on the season leads the majors in extra base hits total bases. Right at the top of the zone one and two. Well he's been filling up the strike zone very consistently since they have moved him into that starting rotation. He's had a great month of June. He won a game out of the bullpen to start the month. He's also won three as a starter but the key for him he's been throwing a lot of strikes. 
And he, as we mentioned earlier, he's been throwing that changeup exceptionally well. There we see it against a lefty. He throws it more to lefties to righties, probably more comfortable with it to lefties, working it in against righties now. But this has been a money pitch for him against left-handed batters. Right over the top, and that's why that ball goes down. Lefties, as a starter versus Ross Dripling, have hit 130 against him when he starts ball games. Runner goes and he got a huge jump as Devers fouls it back. Boy was Ref Snyder off and running. He was about halfway there before Strip let go of the baseball. And Watch they're the jump. running a lot lately, right? They are running a lot and luckily Devers fouls that ball back. They're 28 for 35 in stolen base attempts this season. The eighth best rate in the major leagues and 24 of their last 26 since the middle of May. So something for both Stripling and Gabriel Moreno to keep an eye on tonight. Ref Snyder the lead being held on by Guerrero. And again the one two and he misses high to even it up. Stripling went five scoreless at Kansas City, six scoreless at Detroit, two runs and three and two thirds against the Yankees, and then six innings, one run last time out against the White Sox. Still trying to find that changeup. He's thrown a couple of them that weren't really competitive. Endeavors saw him right away. They might start that runner now. He is going and it's fouled back by Devers. Boy, Stripling having to put in a lot of work here in the early going 14 pitches already as Alex Cora looks on. Charlie Montoya was asked that today before the ball game about Ross Stripling. Can he go 90 pitches since he threw 87 last time. How many innings can he expect from him? he said it all depends on how hard it is to yep. get through this lineup. Long time in the set. Ref Snyder's going again. It's strike three called to throw down, and they got him. Chapman coming over to take the throw as Gabriel Moreno throws out another one. Gabby came into this game throwing out 37% of the base runners trying to steal against him. It's only been the big leagues a couple of weeks, but the reputation is getting around the league quickly. Watch how quickly he gets rid of it and on target in an easy strike him out, throw him out. The fourth runner that he has thrown out already in his brief big league career. So just like that, two down and nobody on for J.D. Martinez. As the complexion of this inning changed quite quickly didn't it absolutely with one pitch they decide to start that runner Dever strikes out just like that you wipe out those base runners before J.D. gets to the plate one and one the count on to Martinez hitting 324 with eight home runs on the season Quiet night last night 0 for 4 in the first game of this series. One and two is stripling up to 94 with that fastball. I think that's a valid point that Charlie was talking about. How long do you let him go? And it's hard to say before the game but it depends on how hard the innings are. He has really had to work hard especially against the middle of this lineup here. That can take its toll later in the ball game. Down and away at 96. I don't know that we've seen Ross Stripling throw 96 this year or even going back to last year. Pete Walker no doubt liking that. And now he's got to get it into the strike zone right now. 
Got him to chase a changeup. Martinez strikes out and Stripling with a little help from Moreno gets out of it with no damage done. Ladies and then the left hand hitting Tapia down to the nine spot. And how about Vladdy? What a month of June he is having overall but especially here at home. The numbers are huge for Guerrero in this ballpark the last few weeks and he knocked one out of here last night. Yeah three home runs last night for the Blue Jays. What a season it has been for Michael Waka six and one with a two thirty five. 234 earned run average beat the Tigers last time out he gave up a two run home run with one out in the first inning then to shut out baseball the rest of the way finishing off those six innings he's allowed two runs or fewer in 10 of his 12 starts now he's a reverse splits guy righties have handled him much better than lefties so Blue Jays are trotting out eight right handed hitters tonight. Big swing by George Springer on the first pitch that he sees and it'll be caught. By the first baseman, Franchi Cordero in foul territory had just enough room to make the play. I think he got a little help from the wind that kept it in fair territory. The defense for the Red Sox, Verdugo, Ref Snyder in center field, and Christian Arroyo in right field. Devers and Bogarts on the left side story, and there was Franchi Cordero at first base, Christian Vasquez behind the plate, and Alex Verdugo in left field is one of the best, leads the American League in innings played as a left fielder. He has also had 68 starts, fourth in the American League in fielding percentage as a left fielder. He's a good one. Bo Bichette steps in. Bichette four for seven with a home run in his career against Waka. 256 with a dozen home runs on the season. And went two for four with a single and a double in last night's game. As he takes inside ball two. The Blue Jays with a win last night, six and two against the Red Sox so far this year. The other seven games before last night all took place back in April. Good take there on a ball down and in. It's three and zero. Oh. As Bo faces a guy who was a college teammate of Ross Stripling's, Michael Walker, Ross Stripling went to Texas A&M together. There's ball four outside. Graduated the same year, drafted the same year. Waka first round by the Cardinals, Stripling fifth round by the Dodgers. Then they lived together after the draft year, went back to uh, Texas A&M and worked out together, and they remain close friends. And kind of weird, we told you Ross Stripling's made 90 starts in the big leagues. Three of them have been opposing <laughs> Michael Waka, who he got his first big league hit off. That's right. Also. Yep. And Waka's putting together a really good season. Signed as a free agent. He's healthy. He's basically cutter change up, and he'll mix in that four seamer. So here's Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who homered last night. And there's the change. Always been a big pitch for Michael Waka. Yes, very good. He's got command with it, along with his fastball, just that, that, that change up. That's been his best pitch this year. Batters hitting just 141 against that changeup this season. Blue Jays are going to have to recognize it early. He throws it 31% of the time, and 58% of his strikeouts this year have come on the changeup. Ball up, and it's fouled off one and one. A lot like Ross Stripling, he's right over the top. So that's four seam change up territory for me when you've got a pitcher who comes right over the top like Waka does and like Stripling does they can get those fingers on top of that baseball and jam that ball back into the palm of their hand and just let it go and let it work its way down in the strike zone. He has not been a huge strikeout guy this year by today's standards 48 strikeouts and 65 and a third he's gotten a lot of soft contact this season. And if you dig a little deeper some would say he's been a little bit fortunate the batting average on balls in play is very low so the ball has been in play a lot but hasn't produced the kind of damage you might expect. So we'll see how that plays out now as it is two and one on Guerrero. He's got a large decrease in his ERA from last year to this year. He's just pitching better. He pitched in the American League East last year. He knows all about these ballparks and these lineups in the American League East. 
came up to the big leagues at the age of 21 and and he was an instant star with the Cardinals in his first couple of years. The lead by Bichette and the 2-1 to Guerrero and that's a fastball low and it is three and one on Vladdy. Don't you love that they're not chasing like they were earlier this season. Yep. They're waiting for those pitchers and again they they chart that they chart every one of these at bats. How many times you swung at pitches out of the strike zone how many times you swung at pitches in the strike zone and lately really for the whole month of June they've really gotten that that pitcher to throw into the strike zone. Just a whole different feel about this team offensively from the first month or so of the season. The three one. And a strike on the outside corner at the knees with a cut fastball. Three and two on Guerrero, who was heading down to first. Christian Vasquez on the outside corner, and that is the cutter. That's an unhittable pitch, and Vladdy took it, trying to get that walk. Those are the kinds three and one you don't swing at. You're not going to do a whole lot with that. Let's see if Bo's running. He is. And it's ball four to Guerrero. So now Vladdy can head down to first. Bichette is at second. And back to back walks issued by Waka. Well, Tabby was talking about it. They are a much more patient team. The chase rate, what percentage of time they swing at pitches outside of the strike zone. 22nd in baseball in April, 10th in May, third best in June. Now, 29.5% to 26% may not seem like a lot, but you can see where it ranks them. And that can be, you know, just three or four pitches a game where you don't chase a bad ball and you might do damage on the next one. I don't know if it was because of the shorter spring training and the guys came out and they just weren't game ready or maybe they are a little bit too anxious. They wanted to do some damage but there was a lot of swing and miss early on. With no Alejandro Kirk in the lineup tonight for the Blue Jays Teoscar Hernandez is up into the cleanup spot. Hernandez went two for four last night hitting 247 with seven homers. So he's kind of flip flopping between four and five depending on if Kirk is in the lineup. And the Blue Jays still feel like they need to make sure they are taking care of Kirk that he is not playing seven days a week. Hernandez with a high fly ball to left. Verdugo is back at the wall jumps and it's off the wall. Bichette now around third heading home Guerrero will be held at third. It's an RBI double for Teoscar Hernandez and the Blue Jays have an early lead. That ball just kept carrying and carrying and Verdugo talked about him. He's an excellent outfielder played it perfectly. He got back to the wall found the wall timed his jump perfectly. It's a change up. He gets out in front of it and Teo thinks it's just a fly ball but remember that ball is carrying again with the the roof off Verdugo just misses it high arching and that wind is, again is going to help it off the wall Bo Bichette had gone back to tag up so he's got a hustle to score from second base on that base hit Vladdy was right on his backside. So an early one to nothing lead for the Blue Jays on the double by Hernandez second and third one out for Lourdes Gurriel Junior as Michael Walker walked a couple and then gives up that double Gurriel up into the five spot tonight remember last night he and Santiago Espinal flip flopped Gurriel up to six Espinal down to eight again no Kirk in the lineup. So some other guys move up so Lourdes is all the way up to fifth tonight. And yeah, Blue Jays want to take advantage of his hot bat especially in big RBI situations like this one. Ground ball to third and Guerrero's going to go back to the bag as Gurriel is retired on a strong throw by Devers two down. 
Well, the infield was back, but that ball was hit so sharply and right at Devers that uh, Vladdy decided to head back to the to third base. Yeah, Devers never even looked at him, so he could have come home, but you don't know that as a runner. There's Vladdy's first reaction. If you don't go right away, don't run into an out. I think they were giving him the run on any ground ball. Michael Walker likes that. So good contact but right at somebody for out number two and now it'll be up to Matt Chapman to try to extend the lead. Chapman with his 11th home run of the season a night ago. And a slow curveball drops in for strike one. Chapman's numbers continue to creep up Tabby over his last 24 games hitting 281 12 extra base hits in 24 games and an OPS of 875 in that stretch. How about that tomahawk swing he had last night getting on top of that high fastball clubbed it to left field for another home run. Vladdy's home run was at a 19 degree launch angle Chapman's was at a 39 degree <laughs> launch angle. <laughs> so it doesn't matter right. No? Doesn't matter what what the launch angle is. No, you can hit a two iron out. You can hit an eight iron out. <laughs> exactly, or the loft. Yeah, <laughs> I think that was his loft wedge. Second and third, two down, and the one two, and maybe another play here for Cordero. Not this time. Maybe another year he makes that play <laughs> but with the netting up it's not going to happen. I think the wind is helping the ball blowing it back in but it's off the top of the netting. Ooh, hit him in the side of the face. Yeah I got a little bit of a piece of him. So can the Blue Jays take advantage of that as Chapman gets another pitch. Center, they sure will. Chapman's going to drive in a couple on a double, and it is three to nothing. Keep feeding them that high fastball, and he's going to keep knocking it back at you. Homered on a high fastball last night. Clutch two out double here in the first inning to get two more runs. For the Blue Jays that bat is starting to heat up. It's a four seam fastball. They think they can go upstairs and Matt says ah I like it up there. Stay on top the hands come through he never gets underneath that baseball. That's when you pop it up He stays on top of it back spins it into the gap for two more runs. And a three run first inning off Michael Waka here's Santiago Espinal. Back to the mound, knocked down by Waka. He's got to chase it down, doesn't have a play. Chapman to third on what should be an infield hit for Espinal. That's the thing about the mound and the turf here. It goes down the mound, but then it rolls away from you. It doesn't stop. Santiago sends it back to him there it goes rolling and it just won't stop on the turf and by the time he picks it up he's got no chance to get Espinal over at first base. He's going to leg it out for a base hit. And a good job by Chapman not to round third too far because Walker was thinking about throwing behind him. So it's first and third two down three runs in already and here's the number eight hitter Gabriel Moreno. Just off the outside corner with the knees for ball one. An impressive couple of weeks as advertised. Hitting for average, line drives, using the whole field. Well, we've already seen him defensively yes. tonight throughout a runner. Let's see if he can help the team offensively. He's throwing out four out of nine now.
Bichette and Guerrero talking over the bottom of the first. Each of them walked. Each of them came around to score. Fly ball pretty well hit to deep right field but it will be caught by Christian Arroyo and that'll end the inning. But it's a good one for the Blue Jays. They get three and two of them come on this line drive double to left center for Matt Chapman. Good start for the Jays here tonight. And he's yeah. got a chance to lead them to the playoffs. What a good start tonight for the Jays up three to nothing. After an inning, Xander Bogarts looks at a strike from Ross Stripling. Bogarts hitting 330 on the season and 380 over his last 14 games. That slider, a big pitch for Stripling against righties. He's thrown about four of them. All of them have missed just down and away and not quite getting the outside corner and not getting these Red Sox to chase at it down and away. Comes in with what looked like a two seamer there, Tabby. It's a mile high pop up, and it is Bo Bichette right out in front of Rymel Tapia to make the catch for out number one. Stripling is doing a lot of things right since he has moved back into the rotation. Check out these numbers the third best ERA in baseball, minimum 20 innings pitch. And batters are hitting 183 against him this month. His whip, and that's the important thing, walks plus hits divided by innings pitch, 077. He's not walking anybody. He's not giving up any hits. And that'll keep that ERA down. As a starter this season, including tonight, 34 strikeouts and only five walks. As Alex Verdugo steps in, the left fielder hitting 260. The Blue Jays shift. Bo just went from the left side of second around to the right. And Stripling's out in front, 0 and 2. One more note before I forget to give it. Remember, we said, wow, 96 in the first inning? Mm -hmm. It's the second hardest pitch of Ross Stripling's career he threw tonight to JD Martinez in the first inning. I know the last time he faced him, he pitched really well against him, and he said he wanted to get back. Uh, like a little revenge velocity he called it because he knows that the Red Sox have really hit him hard in the past. So he he had a little something extra the last time he faced him when it comes to miles per hour tonight even better. Bogarts reliving his at bat here's the one two to Verdugo change up set in the air to left center field long run Tapia. Wow says Ross Stripling and he's not the only one. What a great break he had on that baseball now from a left handed batter against a right handed pitcher that ball is going to be slicing away from Rymel Tapia. He's got to go and he's got to just keep running. He can't slow down. He's got to run through that baseball. Gets a good read dives full extension. And Ross Stripling much appreciated that effort right there from Tapia for out number two here in the second inning. Beautiful play. So two down here in the top of the second and now Trevor Story the second baseman for the Red Sox and there's a swing at that slider fouled it off 0 and 1. One more point about the fastball you were just yeah. talking about the 96 mile an hour fastball that should really play with his changeup. When he starts to throw that changeup, if he's got a little bit more miles per hour on that fastball, that should really help out that changeup. High fastball, and it's pop back foul out of play. Sometimes when we talk to people from other teams and they say, So tell us about Stripling, what's Stripling throw? It's not a quick conversation because he throws a lot of different stuff in a lot of different situations. He moves everything around, no pattern, unpredictable, and it is really working for him right now. Ran into Gabby, Gabby Moreno before the ball game, and I said, hey, You get to catch Stripling again, and said, You like catching him? And he said, Yes, he, you got to think along with him. He said, He's very smart. But you got to think along with him, but he's getting very comfortable catching Ross Stripling. 
using pitch com as well something Moreno did not do in the minors you can see him using it right now stripling gets the sign he wants. Fastball away one ball two strikes on story. Story the club leader in RBIs and one of the re I mean he's been much better lately than he was early in the year but you got guys like Devers Martinez and Bogarts up in front of you. you got some men on base would not chase a change two and two two twenty four average. Yet he's driven in fifty one fifty one runs. Two two. And he fouls it back. Well, and he's hitting 306 with runners in scoring position, so that helps. And again, he's had a ton of guys on base in front of him. Big contract. Six years, 140 million for Story, the former Colorado Rocky. And switching positions. Went from short to second, of course. Bogarts at short for the Red Sox. 2 2 and he lines it hard to left field and it's going to go. Boy, a screamer to left that just snuck over the fence into the bullpen and it is 3 to 1. I didn't think that ball was going to be high enough to get out of here. If that's Fenway Park, that's a single. But here at Rogers Center, it's going to end up being a home run as story. Fought back from an 0-2 count and hit a line drive just over the wall in left field. Go down and get it. Line drive and somehow he's able to get that ball up and stay up. To get the Red Sox on the board. So it is three to one here in the top of the second. As the catcher Christian Vasquez looks at a strike. I don't know that a ball because he pulled it because he hit it on such a low line drive that one got out about as quickly as a ball can get out. That, that, that's a Vladdy type of yeah. home run isn't it. Yep. Line drive doesn't get up very high. That's just the fourth home run Stripling's given up this season. One and two the count with two down and the base is empty. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him for his third strikeout of the night. Story homers, but it's 3 1 Blue Jays going to the bottom of the second. That's the bobblehead day, isn't it? Yep. The second? That uh, should be a collector's item, I'm sure. 3 1 Blue Jays, bottom of the second. Here's Rymel Tapia. The only Blue Jay who did not come to the plate in the bottom of the first, but he has contributed already with a great catch to Rob Alex Verdugo in the top of the second. George Springer DHing tonight as Tapia Man center field. Mike Walker's success has come against lefties this year, and he has used his changeup very effectively against lefties. Don't want to overswing against it. Lefty's hitting just 118 against that changeup against Michael Walker. You saw the Blue Jays back in April, six innings, four hits, one run. And some close takes by a free swinger in Tapia. It's 3 0. Leadoff man George Springer on deck, getting ready to hit for the second time already tonight. Look like Tapia's taken all the way. Three and one. This is where he likes to use that changeup and fastball count so they don't overswing. And way outside, ball four, a leadoff walk here in the bottom of the second. Batter up. 
On now, get 40% off your first three orders with promo code 40BALLGAME, only at DoorDash. Dash that. So Toppy at first here in the bottom of the second, 3-1 Blue Jays. And now George Springer is up. He popped up in foul territory to the first baseman of Franchi Cordero in his first at bat. Tapia runs well. Not going. And a swing and a miss by Springer, 0 1. Tapia, 4 for 5, stealing bases this year, stole 20 last year with the Rockies. Oh, and two. That's one of the things that drew the Blue Jays to Tapia, Rymel Tapia, when they traded Randall Grichik to a, to Colorado, a left-handed swinger, and a guy who could run a little bit. He's trying to give uh, the Blue Jays another added dimension of some speed, and from the left side. He's played all three outfield spots not an everyday guy but playing a few times a week and again giving them just a bit of a different look. Change up taken low two and two. Blue Jays showing a lot of patience against Michael Walker. He's already walked three batters tonight. That ties his season high already. His last uh, half dozen starts, he has eliminated the walks. They went down, 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 down. He's been pitching deeper in the games, but he got three already tonight. And Walker gets in on the hands of Springer as he pops it up for Bogarts, the shortstop, in the first out. Three and one. That's another change up right there, and that swing got a little bit too big right there, and he popped him up. He was looking to try and catch that ball out in front. You can see he got beat just a little bit on that change up on the inner half. Two at bats, a couple of pop ups for for George. So that'll bring up Bo Bichette. Bichette walked and scored in the first. That runner over there means the first baseman's got to hold him on. Gives Bo an even bigger hold to the right side where he loves to he loves to go that way. And he hits one weakly to the right side. Story throws and still gets him by a step. As Bichette is retired for out number two, top of to second. I know teams don't play hit and run anymore. I thought that was a great time to play some hit and run. Bo can handle the bat. You've got some speed over at first base. If he takes off, the second baseman covers, and that ball trickles through to the right side. But as it is, it's a 4-3 and two outs now. Former teammates, right? Story and Tapia, mm -hmm. both with the Rockies in recent years, now both in the American League East. Here's Vladdy. He walked and scored in the three-run first. And a fastball hit hard to center field, but right at Ref Snyder. Didn't have to move. And that'll do it for the Blue Jays here in the bottom of the second. Here is first baseman Franchi Cordero. Hitting 228, three homers, plays some first, a little left, a little right. Former Padre, former Royal. He wasn't on the roster when we saw him in April. No. It's the first time we have seen him this year, and he has added some muscle to that lineup. Sends one to shallow left and Lourdes Gurriel Jr. is there one down. Well there was a 
a player not on the roster in the ballpark today and it appears he's going to be a Blue Jay very soon he is not yet officially a Blue Jay but yes that is Sergio Romo talking to uh, Pete Walker and Matt Bushman and not surprisingly captivating them as as he is wont to do he can talk and he can throw a slider and he is in the ballpark his physical we were told earlier today is tonight and assuming nothing goes awry with the physical he could be on the roster as early as tomorrow now he's not a guy who solves the velocity issue or the swing and miss issue in the bullpen he's a guy who's done it all he's been a closer on World Series winning teams uh, tops out at about 86 has always had the good slider released by Seattle a little while ago and the Blue Jays just going to have a look at him and see if he can help the proverbial catch lightning in a bottle kind of thing a veteran presence who's been there before Blue Jays uh, a little thin down in the bullpen they bring in a veteran here maybe he can give them a little bit of a spark. Romo is 39 years of age and again came up with San Francisco and was there for all three of their World Series championships 2010 12 14 and he has been around since then has pitched for a half dozen other teams since leaving the Giants. He was a closer on those World Series teams. Yep. Uh, for two of them yeah 2012 and 14 he was the closer 137 career saves spent last year with Oakland and again released by Seattle after 17 appearances this year as Stripling misses inside for ball four to Christian Arroyo. 15 years in the big leagues and only Joe Smith has more games pitched among active pitchers than Sergio Romo certainly nothing is going to scare him intimidate him I mean he's done everything you can do the Blue Jays just hoping maybe they can find something or just maybe that a change of scenery helps get him back to where he was a couple of years ago and get some outs getting some outs out of that bullpen and wasn't it interesting uh, we got a shot of Jose Barrios uh, going down there when he was throwing his side they were teammates yeah, teammates in Minnesota. in Minnesota and Barrios was was watching intently as Romo was throwing down in the bullpen. So again not officially a Blue Jay yet the physical we are told tonight could already be done we don't know we'll wait for the announcement there's there's what you're talking about I mean Barrios is he's locked in on him. He's watching his former teammate and zeroing in on him. Oh and two the count on Robert F. Snyder with a runner at first and one out. Three one Blue Jays top three. Ref Snyder looking down to Carlos Fabless the third base coach for the Red Sox. See if anything's doing with Arroyo the runner at first. They've already had one guy thrown out tonight and that was Ref Snyder so do they dare test Moreno again. And Arroyo is three for three in stolen bases this year. It's a Red Sox team that is running more lately. They still have those power guys in the middle of the lineup, but they're utilizing their team speed. To right center field, but well positioned is Tapia. Playing well over into the alley to make that a fairly routine play for the second out. <laughs> In the old days that's a double <laughs> pitch him away play him away. He was shading him the right field and you know all their scouting reports that reports say that ref Snyder drills that type of pitch into the gap in right center field barely had to move. So a big second out considering what part of the lineup the Red Sox are now in here's Rafael Devers he was called out on strikes his first time up. Up and away for ball one. Devers third in the majors in batting average, sixth in slugging, sixth in OPS. Just a great hitter and still only 25 years of age. Got fooled by a changeup, one and one. Big cut there, five homers over his last 15 games and a 
on base percentage of almost 500 over those last 15 games. He doesn't have to pull the ball out of the ballpark to knock it out of here. Devers is about a year and a half away Tabby if not sooner from being a very wealthy man he will be a free agent after next season and you got to believe the Red Sox will do everything in their power and they've got some financial power you got to believe they're going to retain him and he's yeah. going to get a huge deal. Why wait <laughs> right I'd, I'd be talking to him right now he's so young and so established I think he's just going to get better and better and he's hit the, the peak of his physical years. Because he came up at such a young age, he's young. You're going to be signing him to his peak production years. He came up at 20, just like Vladdy did. And by the time he was 22, he was a star. You know, kind of a similar progression when you look at it. His third year. When he was 22 is when his numbers exploded same as Guerrero's did although Vladdy's got even bigger last year than Devers did in his third year then in his fourth year a little bit of a step back still very productive but a step back from his third year and then the last two have been great this one right now if he keeps up the pace he's on right now this will be his best season. A towering fly ball to right center but it's not that deep. The Oscar Hernandez wants it and takes it. He'll toss that ball into the stands and make a friend out in the outfield and then he'll head into the dugout grab his helmet grab his bat and try to do some damage to the bottom half of the inning. And, and you were traded I mean it's it's stressful at the beginning meeting a new bunch of guys and and trying to do as well as you can right off the bat. Say Oscar with a fly ball to left center. Ref Snyder there one down. Well the surroundings are all new right. Everything's new. It's all new to you. The travel where you live how you get in and out of uh, uh, the country when, when you have to travel internationally it's all new and, and uh, they didn't have a real long spring training to get to know each other and get to uh, get acclimated but he's acclimated now. Here's Guriel who grounded out his first time up. You know a couple of other things happened early too and, and this was well documented back in April. Houston New York Cleveland they faced some really tough pitching everybody should have known and you know it was talked about a lot the schedule was going to get easier in terms of the pitching that they were facing and that certainly happened at points over the last several weeks. Boy, a real standoff here between. <laughs> But also so Bo Bichette did not get off to a good start and say Oscar Hernandez got hurt. So your your number two hitter started off cold your number four hitter as Guriel is going to bounce one through the open right side and Guriel heading to second and is in there. Not the hardest double he's ever hit but it's a double nonetheless and it'll make up for those line drives that are caught. That's just a good piece of hitting. Red Sox are in the shift. He notices that pitch away. I'm going to take a shot at that hole. And he does. He gets it by Franchi Cordera. Now it's just going to die into the outfield. He runs with his head up, watching the ball the whole way. Never broke stride. And turns a ground ball to the right side of the infield to a double. Way to go. No one out double for Guriel with the Jays up three one bottom three and here's Chapman who doubled in a couple. So just to, to finish that up so Bo starts cold Teoscar Hernandez gets hurt Vladdy sitting right in between them and I think by his own admission you know you feel some pressure right I mean Vladdy there's a lot of guys but Vladdy is the if you had to pick one guy he's the guy and so right away in the two three four part of your order in the first week of the season Chapman. Good contact to the opposite field but caught by Christian Arroyo. Guriel hustles back to the bag to tag and comes to third. The ball gets past third base but backed up by Waka. 
Lourdes is having an adventure <laughs> this inning, isn't he? That's okay. <laughs> Bottom line is he's staying over at third base. He can laugh about it now. He wasn't really sure if that ball was going to carry and go off the wall or if it was going to die and then get caught by Arroyo. And you see Arroyo was uh, mistaken by that, too. He wasn't really sure what that ball was going to do, but he close enough to the bag to tag up. And Waka alertly back that one up, that throw to third base. Finishing your point, Dan, I think that put some pressure on some of the new guys. Sure. And maybe they were trying a little bit too hard early on to feel accepted and try to make up for some of the other guys who were not as hot. It's all clicking now. Right. Things look like, mm -hmm. you know, everybody expected them to look now offensively. Runner with third, two down. And here's Santiago Espinal hit an infield hit. It went off of Waka and bounced behind the mound. By the time Waka got there, Espinal was safely across. And in there at the top of the zone with a called strike. A base hit for Espinal first time up helping him feel a little bit better no doubt trying to dig himself out really from his first slump of the season and this will make him feel even better an RBI single into right center field to bring in Guriel and make it four to one and, and Santi says OK you're going to shift on me OK I'm going to take advantage of that right side and I'm just going to punch it the other way. He has the ability to spray the ball all over but he was trying to hit the ball over there. He gets a pitch to his liking the hands come first the the bat barrel slows down a little bit. This is a ground ball to the second baseman that's going to turn out to be an RBI single as he beats the shift. And a high change up in for a strike to Gabriel Moreno who hit a fly ball to Fairly deep right field his first time up. They shifted on Espinal. They do not shift on Moreno, the second baseman story, about 12, 14 feet to the right of the bat. It's a pretty adventurous trip around the bases for Guriel. And he ends up at home <laughs> with another run. He trying is, to catch his breath before he has to go back out there. He's earned that rest yeah. <laughs> right there breathing hard. Two and one on Moreno. That that run goes to Guriel. Punching that ball to the right side and then getting to second base putting a little bit more pressure on the pitcher a little bit more pressure on the defense opening up a hole on the right side for Espinal to cash him in. Funny the hardest hit ball of the inning was by Matt Chapman but it's Guriel and Espinal who have the hits the Chapman fly ball did advance Guriel. Big cut there by Moreno boy that's a. That's a, a little bit of a different kind of a swing than we normally see from him. He was telling us until it gets to two strikes with his stance he's got it off the back shoulder he feels like he has a little bit more power in that stance then once it gets to two strikes he's thinking about just making contact the power gets zapped just a little bit but that's OK. He's become a pretty good two strike hitter like that guy. <laughs> he just wants to watch a ball game. <laughs> And another bouncer to the right side. Moreno with a base hit. Espinal around to third. Boy, the Blue Jays have that chop to the opposite field down to a science right now. And that's going to make the Red Sox rethink their defensive shifts. All kind of room on the right side. Gabby Moreno says, I'll take advantage of that. Just punch another one over there. And Espinal always thinking an extra base slow hit ball. I'm going to take third on that one with an aggressive slide. And the hits just keep on coming first and third two down and here's Rymel Tapia. 
who walked in his first plate appearance tonight. Big cut in a foul back. Espinal getting a healthy lead at third base. Devers is playing a ways off the line, so Santiago's getting like 25 feet off the bag. And they had a play on. If he swung through that or took it, Christian Vasquez and Devers, watch Devers sneak in on the pitch. If that ball wasn't fouled off, they had a pickoff play on. 0 oh 2. Runners on the corners for the Blue Jays. And the 0 2 pitch is in the dirt. Moreno bluffed to start from first on that play and then put the brakes on. Maybe just trying to get one of the infielders to take a step. We have found out he can run, <laughs> he is a fast runner. So if they take the opportunity to try and steal here, it might work out for him. I don't know if they would throw through here. Not with that healthy lead by Espinal third base. Yeah, again Devers way off the line. Big lead for Espinal. And the one two swung on and missed as Tapia strikes out to win the inning but the Blue Jays tack on a run and lead four to one at the end of three. Good hitters, veteran hitters, they make you work. Those other teams you name, free swingers. Yeah. Very free swinging teams. This one, a little bit more advanced, a few more veterans. They're not afraid to hit with one strike, maybe two. But all he needs to do, just keep pumping pitches in there. Keep, keep making quality pitches. He's been jumping ahead of a lot of these guys. Dropped a curveball in on J.D. Martinez to get out in front. He struck Martinez out in the first inning. After Martinez, it'll be Xander Bogarts and Alex Verdugo. These two teams will see each other right after the All Star break at Fenway Park. The Blue Jays come out of the break with three in Boston. Boy, he's throwing free, free and easy, and we're seeing 94, 95, and even 196. Like it doesn't look like he's, you know, trying to put a little extra on it. It's just. He's got some good velocity. He, he's had an extra day in between starts. Blue Jays taking advantage of that off day. Slider at 90. <laughs> so he, he has a little extra in, in the tank there. What Charlie Montoya would love for him to have some some quick innings keep that pitch count down. So he can go deeper into this game. Line to center. Tapia back and there Martinez retired. That's always a tough play for the center fielder. As you take a look at the pitch usage for Ross Stripling in the month of June. What he does against lefties and what he does against righties. He just evens it out amongst all of them and he just keeps pitching. He'll read the bats. He'll watch the bats and he'll figure he's got so many different weapons to get you out. He'll figure out a way to get you out. Keeps you on your toes, unpredictable, and really unafraid to use any of his pitches. That the he's incorporated the two seamer, the sinker, more this year, and he has really incorporated the changeup more this year, especially against the righties. Always threw it a fair bit to the lefties. And and I like when he's in the game 
you know if the game plan says this and that's not work he's not afraid to move and change and go to something else. Last time out against the White Sox they had seven right handed batters. And he used the slider just a little bit more. And that curveball is a pitch that they rarely swing at. They don't they just don't seem to have the curveball in their minds very much. So he knows if he can throw it in the zone he is likely to get a cold strike. Yeah just try and steal a strike at some point in that at bat. He can use it early. He can use it for strike two or he can end the at bat with that thing. Says he, he hasn't had the, the great feel like he did when he was with the Dodgers. He was he had a great curveball there. He says yeah, I don't have the, the feel of that but I do have a feel for the change up and all my other pitches. Two and two the count. And that one is lined into left field for a base hit. Guriel's got it just shy of the wall. But a Bogarts who runs pretty well beats the throw into second base. Well that's just a great hitter and a hot hitter and Xander Bogarts who can hit anything. He was fooled on that changeup, Fooled. But stays back just long enough and one hands that ball and is able to keep it fair down the left field line. Good sequence right there from Ross. Just a good hitter hitting a good pitch. So one out double for Bogarts and now Alex Verdugo. He was the guy robbed by Rymel Tapia in left center in his first at bat tonight. And again Tapia is in about the same spot over in left center. There's a sharply hit ball to second. Espinal's got it and all kinds of time to throw out for Dugo for the second out as Bogarts comes to third. You know, when Vladimir Guerrero first went over to first base, he wasn't really sure when to go after the ball. That play right there, he read it right away. And took a half a step and then over to to first base. That is a tough play. But this guy's got such a high IQ in baseball. You can see he's always thinking defensively. If you look at defensive metrics, he leads all American League first baseman in defensive runs saved. Now that's just one of many ways to to look at at a player defensively. He certainly passes the eye test. You know when you watch him play every day. I don't know if it's going to happen, but. I mean he could certainly be a gold glove finalist this year right absolutely easily I mean he, he could win it this year we have the the ability to watch him day in and day out and watch what he does on the field and not just the great plays but all the other little things that it takes to play first base no doubt in my mind he could be one of those guys the shit. Throws out Trevor Story and the Red Sox strand a runner at third still 4 1 Blue Jays. Springer 0 for 2 on a couple of pop ups. Little in for ball one. They have the shift on Springer. He gets shifted more than any other right handed batter on the team and by a wide margin. Opposing teams shift on Springer about 70% of the time. Next up is Danny Jansen, although he's been out a lot, but Jansen's mm -hmm. around 45, 50%. Nobody else more than like 20% of the right handed batters the Jays have. Does he try and take a couple of shots to right field to maybe straighten out that defense a little bit more? For a while there, for about a week, he had like three or four base hits to right field. Ooh, didn't like that one. It was further in than a pitch that was called a ball to begin this at bat. Yeah, he's trained not to swing at that pitch. And then his reaction tells it all. Fouls it back. Ooh, 
almost wound up in the next booth the Red Sox broadcasters where Dave O'Brien and Kevin Euclid are calling the game. I think you had a play. Uh, a little bit higher. Yeah. It had to be a little bit higher. You had that one easily. One, two again. Sometimes with two strikes, you just have to live for another pitch. <laughs> and he is fooled on that change up and fouls it off of Vasquez. Do anything. That was a pitcher's pitch. And he stays alive. Fastball down it in. Two and two now on Springer. Back to the change, and George appeared to pick it up really early, and it's three and two. He never even flinched at that. He's had success against Michael Waka coming into this game. Three for nine. Got one over the plate, fouled it off. He saw that yeah. one too, just a little bit too quick. After that change up, three two change up. Waka will throw that thing anytime. It might be his best pitch again. Batters coming into this game, just a 141 batting average against that changeup. Again, the 3 2. And again, the changeup and a broken bat foul ball. And Louis Rivera is going to pick up part of that bat just beyond third base. George has the rest of it. That would make a really good fungo right now. <laughs> you know what? Change up again. It dives down and in. Gets it right off the label. So you put some tape on that <laughs> just on the top and it, it, you've taken all the weight out of yeah. it but it's really thick Th that would be a really good fungo. Back in the bat rack it goes. Oh. Broke another one. That one lasted one pitch. Now <laughs> yeah, there wasn't any hits in that no. one anyway. This fastball had some movement on it. George fouls it off and then says there's no hits in this bat. <laughs> Get rid of this one. Man. Broken bat on back to back pitches. Let's see if this is a good one. Fouling off some tough ones. That one has seen its last A.B. And a bouncer to third backhanded by Devers and Springer finally retired one down. That was a 12 pitch at bat Tabby. Get that pitch count up to 63. Saw a lot of the pitches. He's still out in front of some of those change ups. That's what Michael Walker can do. He can get you out. On the fastball that can beat you then the change up. This guy just knows how to pitch. Bo Bichette the batter now. Bo walked and scored in the first and grounded out in the second. It is four to one Blue Jays in the bottom of the fourth out hitting the Red Sox six to three. And he gets a first pitch change up and fouls it off. Two guys throwing the change up a lot tonight. Walk has thrown 19 of them. Stripling's thrown 14 of them.
Oh and two. Boy, he saw that one big, didn't he? Yes, he yeah. did. Yeah. And the eyes lit up. He says, I'm going to hit this one a long way, but he just comes up empty. They must have stressed that change up at Texas A&M, I guess, <laughs> right? <laughs> These two again, Waka yeah. and Stripling teammates. They're good. Good change ups. Both drafted in 2012. This one hit well to center. But it'll be caught on the track by Ref Snyder for the second out. Speaking of well hit balls to center field, Tabby. Yeah, last night we saw Vladdy hit this line drive. That's one way to look at it. How about this way? The low launch angle of six home runs that he has hit in 2022. Oh, sir. Those are line drives that just go farther than everybody else's. A walk and a line out to center tonight. And now a one hopper to Bogarts at short. And the Blue Jays will go in order. We are through four at the ballpark. It's the Blue Jays four and the Red Sox one. Just what the Blue Jays needed yesterday. And again, Stripling flipping a curveball in there for a strike. This one will get down in center field a base hit for Christian Vasquez to lead off the fifth for the Red Sox. He is such a tough at bat. Took that first pitch and then just risked that ball out into the outfield. To lead off the inning. Fastball up and away not a full swing. Just get the bat head right to the baseball. Good start. Now Franchi Cordero the first baseman hitting in the eighth spot. Looks at strike one called Cordero with a fly ball to shallow left his first time up. If you talk to Charlie Montoya on a regular basis and you and I do you will hear him say a lot it all starts with starting pitching It all all begins with starting pitching good change up there 0 and 2 and obviously what Gosman did last night the way Stripling has been pitching Manoa tomorrow the Blue Jays liking the way they were lined up for this series. Well just look through the last time through the starting lineup. Manoa pitched well they won. Then Kikuchi and Barrios did not have their A game and they lost that game. Those two games in Milwaukee Gosman yesterday. And so far so good tonight for yep. Ross Stripling. It's no mystery. You get good starting pitching. George not happy with that swing. And but you get sorry Dan you, you get good pitching it's going to keep you in ball games. and good starting pitching stops good hitting and the Red Sox are a good hitting team. And nothing has been said formally either in favor or to the contrary about Thursday and whether or not you say Kikuchi is going to start obviously Manoa has been announced for tomorrow nothing has been announced for the Tampa Bay series at this point it kind of feels like Kikuchi mm -hmm. is going to get the start Thursday but uh, as and Charlie wasn't asked about it today he was asked about it yesterday and said as of now something to the effect of as of now that's the plan but nothing is etched in stone. Liner fair down the right field line. Extra bases for Cordero. Vasquez is going to be held at third. 
It's a double for Cordero. He is a dangerous hitter. He's got tremendous bat speed again. Blue Jays didn't see him the first time they faced the Red Sox back in April. But he is coming on strong now. Gets that ball down the right field line for Cordero. He ranks 15th in Major League Baseball in hard hit rate. A welcome addition to this team. A little thump down in the bottom of that lineup. Big guy, 6'3, 225. Hernandez getting it back in to hold Vasquez at third. And Pete Walker has come out for a conversation with Ross Stripling and the rest of the infield. And there's some scrambling down in the bullpen right now. 77 pitches and Stripling one batter away from the third time through the order. But the contact this inning is enough for them to get somebody up. It looks like Trent Thornton is starting a throw for the Blue Jays. Gage and Thornton. Thornton last pitched on Saturday in Chicago when a couple of innings. Gage last pitched on, or in Milwaukee I should say Gage last pitched on Sunday in Milwaukee. This one is popped up and Vladdy might have a play here and he does and then alertly turns and focuses on the runner at third Vasquez to make sure that he wasn't going to try to dash home. He had some thoughts of it. He went back to tag alertly on a foul ball. And Guerrero. He knows he's been around the game that he knows that once he catches this ball and turns and looks right away and instead of throwing it runs it in. No threat of trying to throw it away just run the ball back into the infield. So that's out number one now it's Rob Ref Snyder. Blue Jays will concede a run on a ground ball. Ref Snyder with a base hit then was thrown out trying to steal in the first. And a fly ball out to center field in the third. Pitch number 80 upcoming for Stripling. Rounded up the middle. Espinal's got it. The play is to first. Ref Snyder retired. Vasquez in to score. Cordero to third. It's four to two. Did you see what Espinal did there when he fielded that ground ball it was hard hit right back to the pitcher and when he caught it he glanced very quickly to third base to see what that runner at second was going to do right back through the middle he looks says okay the guy's running hard I'll take the out over at first base but if he wasn't running this is Vasquez running hard to score if Cordero wasn't running hard Espinal was thinking about maybe going to third. Yep. Heads up play. So two down to run over third four to two and here's Rafael Devers over two. And it's popped up. Bichette is there. And it makes the catch to retire the side. So just one run scoring it is four two Blue Jays going to the bottom of the fifth. Let's get an update now with Jamie Campbell. Teoscar Hernandez will lead off the bottom of the fifth. Teoscar with an RBI double in the first, and then a fly ball to center in the third. He'll be followed by Lourdes Gurriel Jr. and Matt Chapman. Looking around at how some of the other American League East teams are doing tonight. The Yankees are up two to nothing on Oakland in the bottom of the fifth. Marvin Gonzalez has hit a home run. Tampa Bay is up one to nothing on Milwaukee in the bottom of the fifth. Shane Boz on the mound for the Rays in that one. Brandon Woodruff is off the IL and pitching for Milwaukee. Baltimore is out on the West Coast playing Seattle a little bit later tonight. And Boy, they're playing really well. They are. They hit, I know they hit at least five home runs last night. I fell asleep shortly after the fifth. I was watching a little late baseball last night. They beat Seattle nine to two. Adley Rutschman is starting to hit. Mm -hmm. Santander homered. Hayes homered. Mountcastle homered. Mateo homered. 
They are not the pushovers they're, that they've been. They're 35 and 40, playing in the toughest division in baseball. Playing a tough schedule too, just like the Blue Jays. They're playing a lot of tough teams early on this year. Teoscar has had a lot of success against Boston in his career. He's had 60 games against the Red Sox. He's homered 18 times. Tonight he just missed number 19 against him in the first inning. And I thought he had a really good swing his last time up. Up the middle Bogarts has it but does not have a play. And that'll be a base hit for Teoscar Hernandez. They Oscar runs too well even if he comes up with this he is not going to throw him out. Bogey gets to it knocks it down. Yeah even if he grabs it and throws, it he can't get anything on it to to get to Oscar base hit his second of the night. So here's Lourdes Gurriel Junior Gurriel's one for two doubled and scored his last time up. As he bounced one through the right side, didn't hit it hard. Hit it almost straight down to the ground, about a three hopper into shallow right, and just ran hard right out of the box and got to second before anybody could get to the ball out on the outfield. Yeah, hit a ground ball to the right side, turned it into a double. Now look how they're playing. Trevor Story almost at straightaway second base now. When he hit that ball to the right side, he was shifting him. He was behind second base. The O two, and he takes it outside. If you were the opposing team all things being equal because every pitcher is different. But would would you ever shift a guy like Guriel would you ever shift to Oscar Hernandez would you shift those guys at all. Depending on the pitcher depending on the pitcher. I, I, yeah. I think it would depend on the pitcher I think it would depend on the score the inning the count. The uh, the batter there are some. Throwing in the bullpen that's Tyler Danish of the Red Sox. But generally speaking I would not I, I wouldn't because of their ability to hit the ball the other way. Jansen seems like a guy you would shift. Yeah. I mean you know Danny's on record saying hey I'm trying to pull the ball yeah. and, hit, and hit it hard and and I get the Springer one as well but all the other right hand about it, I mean Vladdy hits rockets to right center field and, and center field now a lot of guys. Will pull the ball on the ground, hit the ball in the air to the opposite field, right? Vladdy does hit most of his ground balls, obviously, to the left side. He gets shifted sometimes, but less than you'd think. Springer and Jansen are the only two righties who really get shifted a significant percentage of the time. Lourdes' batting average is going up because he's going the other way. Turned on that one, but he pulled it foul. <laughs> wow. He's got a lot of energy tonight. He's ready. He's ready to hit. Mm. Must be nice to be 23, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and to be able to do I, that. I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> two and two. More night starter Alec Manoa getting in on the fun. Well, it took him about five minutes to feel like he was part of the gang when he showed up last year. And at the knees for strike three called, much to the dismay of Lourdes. He 
He's had a good eye. Is really seeing the ball well lately. That's why that batting average is going up. He watches it. Thinks it's down. Maybe by a thread. <laughs> on the strike zone. Dave Bush, the pitching coach, out for a conversation with the Waka. Danish continues to throw in the pen. This is all about game planning, what they want to do with Matt Chapman. He's had two really good at bats. He doubled to left center field on a high fastball his first time up and then sent the right fielder Arroyo to the warning track his second time up. <laughs> he is funny. And he's not the only one who's funny in there. Yeah, getting into it. Yeah. They have a good time at home. I mean, they have a good time on the road. They have a great time at home. Mm -hmm. They really, you know, they know where they want to sit and they have some fun in that dugout. Here's Matt Chapman, a two run double in the first, a deep fly ball to right in the third. Curveball 0 and 1. Maybe he gets more of that now because of those two really good at bats his first two times up. Sure, that was the message from pitching coach Dave Bush. That's pulled hard but foul down the third baseline. 0 and 2. So Stripling done after five innings and two runs allowed tonight and it looks like Adam Simper is going to be coming in Thornton was up back when Stripling was throwing in the fifth but now that Stripling got out of it and it's gone to the sixth, looked like it'll be Simber. Another hard hit ball but this one well foul nice play off the netting way to handle the carom. Yeah. <laughs> and a fan gets it. That's awesome. That's great. You got to love the kids who as soon as they see a foul ball hit run down to the <laughs> to the front row. Oh two again. Waka comes into the game with a 234 ERA. This is just the second time in 13 starts this year he's given up four or more earned runs. And a fastball misses away two and two. He had a season high seven strikeouts in his last outing. He's got two tonight. Blue Jays are really zeroing in on him and getting him into the strike zone. They've shown a lot of patience on those borderline pitches. Now full. And will Tay Oscar be running from first? Espinal's next. He is running and it's fouled off by Chapman. Not a bad idea. Start that runner create something on the infield. Trevor Story was covering on that one. As a hitter all you want to know is he going. Just, I don't want to be surprised. Just give me the sign that he's going so I can concentrate on that baseball. A little bit harder. Going again. And popped up by Chapman back of the plate. And the catch will be made. The throw to first. And they got him. And Tay Oscar just not getting back to first quickly enough. Saw the play, saw the ball in the air, and just did not get back to first quickly enough. And a good play by Vasquez to double him off. He sees it. 
Vasquez right away firing to the bag for the double play. For the game now in the sixth inning with the Blue Jays up four to two. And where they are in the lineup, I think that's why Adam Simber is in here in the sixth inning. Martinez, Bogarts, Verdugo, the middle of the lineup for the Boston Red Sox. Simber has done a little bit of everything for the Jays this year. He also has nine holds coming out of that bullpen. And a swing and a miss by Martinez. It's 0 and 1. So Simber well rested, looking down the line a bit. Jordan Romano extremely well rested right now. Tim Meza was off yesterday. Matt Gage was off yesterday. David Phelps has worked the last two games, last two days. And he got him with a fastball up and in. How about that? Simper strikes out Martinez on three pitches. And as we show you the line for Ross Stripling, and again, considering how good of a lineup the Red Sox have, how hot they have been. This is a terrific performance by Stripling. Absolutely. He got the, the big help in the first inning on the strike him out, throw him out. He got the great play in the second inning off the bat of Verdugo, but he made quality pitches. I mean, every one of those 81 pitches were stressful type of pitches against this type of offense, and he, he pitched another beauty. Xander Bogarts looks at a strike. Bogarts one for two, doubled his last time up. Martinez probably still shaking his head a little bit. And Simber struck him out on three pitches. Got him with that fastball up and in. He, he Martinez, had a lot of success against Adam Simber coming into that at bat. Three for five with a home run, but he threw him a couple of sliders and then that rising fastball. Up and in, got rid of a pretty good hitter quick. You know, if Sergio Romo is indeed a Blues, uh, officially a Blue Jay as of tomorrow, there are some similarities, obviously, between Simber and Romo. Neither one throws very hard, both come from the side to a certain extent. It'll be interesting to see. How they're used. Simber's going to get the higher leverage. I mean, he's earned that right. He's been here a couple of years. He's pitched very well, but it's it's two guys with a, a similar MO out there on the mound to a certain extent. And that's where you got to pick and choose where you want to use them. Where in the lineup do you want to use them against what type of hitters will that breaking ball from Sergio Romo work? You know, the guy they really miss, I think, Jimmy Garcia. He was pitching really well. When he went on the injured list, his fastball had some giddy up to it. There he is right there. His slider was a little bit better. Trevor Look. Richards trying to work his way back from the IL as well. Yeah, through to some live hitters yesterday. I asked him how he felt. He said, I felt great. Do you have to go out on a rehab? He goes, I'm not sure. They haven't told me yet, but he was throwing the ball well. Lined up the middle and right there is Espinal two down. Knock your reno out of the park during the paint and reno sale. June 23rd to July 13th. Only at home hardware and building centers. Here's how. Brisk business at J Shop here for the Rogers Center. Nice crowd here on a Tuesday night to see the Blue Jays and the Red Sox. It is 4-2 Jays top six. And Simber has gotten Martinez and Bogarts. Now he'll face the left hand hitting Alex Verdugo. One difference between Simber and Romo. Simber throws the fastball more often. Romo at times, I mean, especially against a righty, he can sit there and flip seven or eight sliders in a row in some at bats. And he will. Yeah. You're right. Simber a little bit further to the ground when he releases the ball. A little bit. Ryan Brazier now getting loose in the Red Sox pen.
down the left field line and that's a fair ball boy for Dugo didn't hit that hard at all but kept it fair and he's got himself a two out base hit. Well he's hot right now that's a nine game hit streak for Verdugo. He was fooled on that ball. Jammed up Simba really got in there. And he fights it off down the left field and somehow he's able to keep that ball fair down the left field line. But when you're swinging as hot as he is right now those balls are going to find their way to a base hit good job by Guriel to hold him to a single though. So the tying run will come to the plate here with two outs in the sixth and it'll be Trevor Story one for two the one a home run line drive into the Blue Jays bullpen back in the second. And strike one called on a ball that Story says are you sure because I'm not sure. In fact I'm sure that it wasn't a strike. <laughs> I know fans of whatever team they are fans of think it happens to their team more than the other team but it happens to everybody. I don't know if it evens out but it happens to everybody and there's there's a pitch we've seen Simber use with uh, regularity and succeeding a lot that that fastball it's not an illusion that it's rising it is rising. Yeah right? it, he goes down and he likes to elevate it to those batters fastball up. You can go up just a little bit more if you want. Or you can sweep that uh, sweep that slider. The 0 2 inside almost hit him in the hands ball one. And the appeal but no swing. Rises up above the strike zone and no chase by story, so it's two and two. Not a bad idea, though. Just go up a little bit further, see if he would go after it. Adam has handled Trevor Story three times. He's faced him three times. He's got him out all three times. Short lead at first by Vasquez, and the two-two foul back. Stand with the fastball. Excuse me, uh, Verdugo at first. And still two and two on story. Waka, the starter for the Red Sox tonight. Brazier up in the pen. And again, the two two. Stays with a fastball and gets a fly ball to center. And right there is Rymel Tapia. A nice job by Simber here in the top of the sixth. The Red Sox. Pierce went on to play well at the end of the 2018 season as Brazier comes in and then was the MVP of the World Series. So, and then retired in 2019. Played a little bit in 19 and then retired. So, I think you could really say both teams. Made out well in that deal. Obviously, Pierce was MVP of the World Series, and Espinal has turned himself into quite a player. And you know, hopefully, with many years to go for the Blue Jays. Yeah, a classic trade that helped out both teams. The Red Sox were looking for some right-handed thumb, a veteran, a guy who could help them in the uh, the playoffs in the World Series. Blue Jays were looking to get younger to try and find a prospect, maybe steal a prospect from them, and they did that. Espinal's turned into a really nice player. Pierce did what he was supposed to do. Win win. Both teams <laughs> won that trade. Here's Gabriel Moreno. One for two. Had a base hit to right his last time up. Moreno now 12 for 35 in the big leagues. 11 singles, one double. 
just one walk but only two strikeouts as well. And now he's got a battle as Brazier pumps in a couple of fastballs to get out in front of and two. Well get used to that with Brian Bra Ryan Brazier. He is going to throw tons of strikes. Slider down to the knees lifted to center and ref Snyder there two down. Brazier has given up more home runs than walks this year. He's given up five home runs. He's only walked four batters. It's going to be around the plate with his fastball slider combination. Yeah, he's, he's given up some runs, but he doesn't walk anybody. They're a little thin in the pen. Tanner Houck is not here, not vaccinated. Matt Barnes, who was their closer, but boy, has he fallen on hard times the last year or so now. He's on the IL as well. So their bullpen, like the Blue Jays, not really looking exactly the way they thought it would look a little bit earlier in the season. They'll get Houck back, of course, as soon as they move on to their next series. Guy who's really stepped up for them is a righty named John Schreiber, who's having a great year. Remember, Garrett Whitlock was in the bullpen at the beginning of the right. year. He's in the starting rotation now out, as you see Trent Thornton starting to get loose for the Blue Jays. So, this is a little bit of a different situation than we usually see Thornton in, but this feels like a Simber got the heart of the order, Thornton mm -hmm. gets the bottom of the order, and then maybe Mesa Romano, the plan for eight and nine. Phelps again has pitched the last couple of days so you got to assume that he's down and you talked about Jimmy Garcia that's he's on the I.L. so they're down a guy right now. Yeah and then that would be the guy if they get back to that middle of the lineup would be the guy but he's not here. He would have that would have been the matchup that Charlie would have used now he's got to find somebody else who's it going to be. Having a good time down there as always. Blue Jays up 4 2, bottom 6. And the 1 2 to Tapia. Down and in. A little more serious at the, at the other end of the bullpen. <laughs> Some giggles down there. A little more, a little more serious face. down here. Right? face yeah. on this side <laughs> of the dugout. <laughs> yeah. And a liner into left field. A base hit for Tapia. He always seems to do something when they put him in the lineup to help out the team. Been going the other way just a little bit more. Frazier fastball away. Don't try and pull it. Just slice it the other way. I think this is a running situation here. We talked about his speed earlier today. He is four for five in stolen bases. Give him a shot to get into scoring position for Springer. George 0 for three on the night. Eighth hit of the night for the Blue Jays. And a base hit into right center. Tapia around second on his way to third. The throw comes through on a bounce, but late. And the Blue Jays have runners on the corners with two down. We talked about that last time George Springer was at the plate how they shift them. They've got all three infielders on the left side of the infield. Nobody on the right side. Basically he's going to take advantage of it this time. Inside outs that swing. That would have been a ground ball right at the second baseman. Instead it's a base hit into the outfield. Tapia with his speed and two outs. He's going to test that arm of Arroyo. It's going to make it easily. Blue Jays got something going after two outs. Let's see if Bo Bichette can cash a run or two in here. Bo is 0 for 2 with a walk on the night. 4 2 Blue Jays, bottom six. And it's off the outside corner with the knees for ball one. Swing and a miss, one and one. 
and stay on that ball there. That was a slider. Again, he's going to be around the plate. Hardly walks anybody. This is his slider. Down and away. Springer's running. And the pitch taken for ball two, and there's no throw. They don't want to risk it with Toppy at third. Stolen base number seven on the year for George Springer. He's only been thrown out one time. Why not take a shot right there? You know they're not going to throw through. Now you've got a couple of guys in scoring position. And a fastball finds the outside corner two and two. Razor's got a good arm. That fastball at 96 miles an hour. To righties, he'll use that about 60% of the time. And here we go. Foul it off. Still two and two on Bichette. Blue Jays have left five men on so far tonight all of those in the first three innings and they'll leave two more on here in the sixth as Brazier strikes out Bichette so it's four two Jays at the end of six let's get a Blue Jays central update right now with Jamie and Joe four to two Trent is working on four consecutive outings of no runs allowed against the Yankees a couple of times against the White Sox and that one game in Milwaukee he's pitched against Boston one time this year looking to get back at Boston he threw an in and gave up a couple of earned runs his slider has been really good lately it's been tight and he's been throwing it for strikes and the first pitch to Christian Vasquez is chopped right to Bo Bichette at short one out here in the Boston seven. He's been throwing his fastball over consistently. He's been throwing his slider over consistently. Since he has moved into the bullpen, he doesn't have that wide array of pitches. He has cut it down just a little bit, and I think that has helped him to master a few of those pitches. He's down in the minors for a while. Remember from uh, mid to late May, Trent was down with Buffalo for a couple of weeks, but. Overall has done a nice job. There was that one outing against the Yankees, the five runs in a third of an inning a couple of weeks ago, but not that you can take that one out of there, but you take that one out of there, and he's done a nice he's pitched some good innings for the Blue Jays this year and is one of the guys capable of going more than an inning. Even with the five runs, five runs and just five earned runs in just a third of an inning, his ERA is still really good at 345. The 2-0 to Franchi Cordero pulled foul. Wouldn't chase that slider down and in three and one. In his rookie year 2019, he started 29 games mm -hmm. and led the Blue Jays in innings pitched that year at 154 and a third. This is his 22nd game of the season. No starts. He has been in the bullpen the whole time, pitching in some long relief, and now this is a big part of the ball game here in the seventh inning. Some big innings. Mm -hmm. And he missed just inside for ball four. Get started with a TD Unlimited checking account, and you could get $300 in Amazon gift cards. TD, ready to help you move forward. 
So as night falls here in Toronto, the Blue Jays with a 4-2 lead on the Red Sox. One on, one out. And it's the number nine hitter, Christian Arroyo. Ground ball to short to second one, and that's all they'll get. A nice flip by Bichette and a good decision to buy Espinal to not force anything out at second. Charlie Montoyo is looking for something. He has called timeout and he wants to talk to the umpires. I wonder if no slide at second base might have had something to do with that. Bo goes over to second base. The runner pop up. The pop up slide. I wonder if he's going to argue something about that. Boy, it looks like they are going to take a look at it. Well, at least Charlie's out for a conversation with the umpires right now. I mean there's a little bit of contact but he he was into the slide before he got to the bag. I, I wonder if if Espinal had gone ahead and tried to throw that ball and there was some collision out there if they would have an argument. But he didn't even try and throw the ball. Well, just looking quickly uh, online begins his slide before reaching the base. He did that like he was down mm -hmm. in time is able to reach the base with his hand or foot. He did that is able to remain on the base after completion of the slide. He did that and did not change his pathway for the purpose of initiating contact with the fielder. So yeah, they're they're not going to look at it. it looked like that slide was fine. So runner at first two down after the fielder's choice and now this is a big at bat. Rob Ref Snyder with two down. Rafael Devers <laughs> is on deck. The Blue Jays do not want to see Rafael Devers here this inning. And that's why they have Tim Mesa up in the bullpen just in case they do. Driven to center field. This ball's hit hard and it's gone. A two run home run to straightaway center for Rob Ref Snyder. And the Red Sox have tied the game. That is three RBIs now no, for no. Ref Schneider. He got a ground out to drive in a run and then puts a charge into that one. I don't think anybody was expecting that. Just his second home run of the season. Thornton with a fastball, belt high. Ref Snyder hit that ball hard and ties up this ball game and sends Trent Thornton out of this game. So Tim Mesa on his way in as the Sox have come back to tie it. Down right now. Simber in the sixth against the heart of the order. Thornton got the bottom, but then came around at the top for Ref Snyder. Who homered and now instead of Mesa facing Devers say next inning with a lead he's facing Devers this inning in a tie as Devers slashes one into left and that's a base hit. Tough to keep him down fastball away. 24th game of the season for Mesa ERA just under three leads him off with a sinker that doesn't really sink it stays out over the plate. You can see Devers recognizes it early. He's got the ability to go the other way as good as anybody. So the go ahead run is on with two outs in the seventh and now here's J.D. Martinez. 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts tonight. And 0 for 7 in the series. Blue Jays led 3 to nothing after an inning 4 to 1 after 3. Four to two when Stripling left the game after five, but the Ref Snyder home run here in the seventh has tied it. Zero oh and two.
Last night one of those rare games against the Red Sox. Well and they even kind of got going to the ninth. Got a couple of runs in and a couple of men on and. You think you got them and you no. quite got them. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that about every team in the American League East. How many times have we said that against the Yankees. I think they have the most comeback wins this season in baseball the Tampa Bay Rays are the same way Baltimore Orioles are getting like that action in the pen that's Schreiber on the left and Danish on the right. But Schreiber was going to close for him. Yeah I thought he'd be pitching a little bit later with Tanner Houck not here with the team on the restricted list. A little in one ball two strikes on Martinez. Alex Cora deciding how to play it depending on what happens here in the remainder of the top half of the seventh. And he got him. Mesa strikes out J.D. Martinez. Seventh inning stretch here for the ballpark. The Red Sox have tied it. Seventh, and here's a guy who has become a huge part of the Red Sox pen this year, right hander John Schreiber. You could take a look at those numbers. He leads the team and holds with 13, one of seven pitchers this season with a sub one ERA. It's 0.79 and at least 20 innings. Sinker, slider, lefties and righties not having a lot of fun against this guy this year. Originally a 15th round pick of the Tigers the Red Sox claimed him off waivers uh, waivers in Schreiber off waivers in <laughs> February of 2021 and he has found something this year with the Boston has taken a huge step forward. He is likely in he's the best they've got right now he's likely in because you know who is up for the Blue Jays. Now it off by Vladdy one and one. Yeah we're, we're seeing this more and more that managers are. Pitching their best pitchers against the opposition's best hitters. They've got Guerrero, Hernandez, Guriel, three of the hottest hitters of the Blue Jays coming up this inning. So they're going to go to Schreiber. He's given up just one home run in 22 innings this season. And you see who's coming up. Teoscar Hernandez on deck, Lotus Guriel behind him. Blue Jays got three in the first one in the third haven't scored since and the Red Sox have come back to tie it. Chop towards third this is going to be a tough play and Devers won't even have a play it'll be an infield hit for Guerrero. Everybody digging that one sinker. He hits it right out in front of home plate up the third base line with that sinker. And once Flatty gets going, it's hard to stop him. <laughs> His straight ahead speed is pretty good. Legs it out for an infield hit. Good start for the Blue Jays here in the seventh. So now Teoscar Hernandez, two for three, had an RBI double in the first and an infield hit in the fifth. Beat him with a fastball, 0 and 2. Nobody up in the Blue Jays' pen, so it looks like Tim Mays will be, will be coming back after the top of the eighth. And as the Blue Jays try to reclaim the lead, slider away, ball one. Righties are hitting just 138. Against Shriver. Pick your side of the plate. Do you think he's going to throw you that fastball that sinks down and in? Or is he going to throw you that slider that goes away? Wow. 
Swing and a miss at a fastball for the first out as we send it down to Hazel May. Dan, I asked Alex Cora who's been the standout for him so far this season, and without missing a beat, he said John Schreiber. He's brought structure to our bullpen, he told me. And they had to be patient because they needed to clear some roster space in order to bring him on. He was pushing and pushing us down there in the minors until he just knocked down the door, and we had no choice but to call him up in April. Cora saying he's been the best arm in that Boston bullpen, guys. And you don't have to see him. Thank you, Hazel. You don't have to see him for long to see why. I mean, this is tough stuff the Blue Jays are dealing with right now. As Guriel fouls one off. The movement, the arm angle, the velocity. He's had 24 appearances, 23 of them scoreless. I think they called him up the last time they were here. I remember seeing him for the first time. And he yeah. went around 0 and 2 on Guriel. It's only the seventh inning, and it's a tie score. There was some talk. We heard that he was going to be the closer now that Tanner Houck is not here. Face in the middle of the Blue Jay lineup gave up an infield hit to Guerrero struck out Hernandez Alex Cora using his best guy against the best hitters the Blue Jays have. Again the 0 2 hit sharply but right at Bogarts and the Red Sox will turn the double play. So that'll be that end of seven and still tied at four. Bogarts one for three had a double back in the fourth Blue Jays out hitting the Red Sox ten to eight. They have left seven men on the Red Sox have left five. And a strike to Bogarts. Well, this is what it's like, right? In the American League East. Mm -hmm. Charlie was talking about it yesterday. Every game seems to be the feel of a playoff type of game. Every pitch becomes important, every at bat, every decision becomes important. The Blue Jays are 13 and 14 within their division and 28 and 18 outside the division. This is their ninth game out of 19 against the Red Sox. They've already played 12 of the 19 against the Yankees. They've only seen the Rays three times, five more coming up this week, and they've only seen the Orioles four times and don't see them again until August. Go figure. Red Sox are in a stretch during which they play 36 of their next 42 against teams with winning records. Bogarts aboard. The Red Sox have played very few games, relatively speaking, within the division. They are just, let me do a little math here. They are just 7 and 15 in the American League East. So 35 and 17 outside the division. They've got a ton of games coming within the division the rest of the way. And that's why they said we are not conceding the division to the Yankees just yet. I don't think anybody is. It's still way too early. They play the Yankees a lot too. Here's Alex Verdugo with a man on. Verdugo one for three had a base hit the other way his last time up. So the Blue Jays have used Simber Thornton now Mesa tonight. Phelps you would think unavailable having pitched each of the last two days. Romano definitely is available as now Verdugo lines one into center. That's a base hit more good contact from Verdugo and the Red Sox have the first two men on. He comes into this series very hot hitter. 
extended his hit streak to nine games. Pete Walker is going to want to talk about this with Tim Mesa. Made a slight adjustment, sees the ball a little bit better, and stayed in on that lefty that time. One lefty in the game and the other lefty getting up. Matt Gage now starting to throw. So we mentioned who's pitched and who hasn't yet. Romano in the right situation. Definitely available. Other than Gage you've got Sean Anderson and Max Castillo. Sean Anderson pitched in last night's game an inning. And Max Castillo threw four innings wasn't it. Mm hmm. That was on Saturday. I wouldn't think he's ready to go. And he's, mm -hmm. you know, this is not the kind of situation they'd want to bring him into. Just a couple of major league appearances. So there's Trevor Story. One for three. Homer to back in the second. Chased one away and he fouled it back. 0 and 1. You know the bullpen not looking right now obviously as it looked at the beginning of the year. Uh, Jimmy Garcia on the I.L. Mm -hmm. Trevor Richards on the I.L. And some other guys that you know they were hoping to get contributions out of for one reason or another. Ryan Baruch is now in Seattle. Julian Merriweather on the I.L. Nate Pearson with a lat strain. He's out several weeks. At least several weeks. Three we to four out, weeks. Yeah, three to four weeks before they let him even. Before they revisit to see if he's ready to begin a throwing program. Mm -hmm. So this is a long term thing with Pearson. You know I, we just mentioned a lot of names that if a couple of them had come through things would look a lot different in the bullpen right now. But the, the core guys in this pen have been worked pretty hard this year. Oh two. Well you got to make do with what you have yep. right and Tim Mesa since he has come off the injured list he has pitched uh, four times and he's been in this situation right here he just has to keep telling himself make a good pitch maybe throw that sinker and get a ground ball here get two outs for the price of one. No two. Fouled back. Runners getting a little aggressive out there. Bogarts and Verdugo on the bases, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, Bogarts is trying to time him up. He bluffed out at second base. Maybe he feels like Tim is just giving him one look or not paying too much attention to him. But he bluffed on that last pitch. O2 again. And a swing and a miss to get him for out number one. Kept everything away from him. That was a little bit better fastball with better movement to it. That sinker off the plate. He kept everything away from Story. Pitched away from his power and comes up with his first strikeout. That's where you want to put that pitch. To finish off the at bat. So one down, and now Christian Vasquez one for three. Vasquez singled and scored back in the fifth. And right on the outside corner at 96, 0 and 1. Right on the inside corner at 96, 0 and 2. I like how they're bluffing back at second base. That's Espinal trying to duck in behind Bogarts just to keep him honest at second base so he can't get a good jump. And also keep him from 
giving away some location also when you're ducking in behind him like that. That's it. And again the runners aggressively moving around out of the bases. They weren't running but they're sure looking like they want to one and two now the count on Vasquez. Moreno likes to throw that ball around too. Espinal talking to Chapman on the infield Espinal trying to keep Bogarts close. Moreno the signs and Meza trying to deal with Vasquez. Two and two. And the pitch. And that is a base hit into left field. Up with it, Guriel. Runner heading home. Throw to the plate, not in time. And Bogart scores on the single by Vasquez as the Red Sox take the lead. They were bluffing out at second base, and Espinal had ducked in behind there just in case. But. The runner Bogart's got a good break. It's another sinking fastball, hoping to get a ground ball. But Vasquez golfs that ball into center field. There's Bogart's. He gets a good read on that ball, and he's off. Heck of a throw from Guriel. One hop right on the plate. Gets rid of it quickly, accurately. But Bogart's with that great jump beats the throw. And that is all for Tim Mesa. Matt Gage coming in. And it looks like Bobby Dahlbeck coming up. But a two run home run in the seventh by Rob Refsnyder off Trent Thornton. A run coming in off Tim Mesa here in the eighth. Now Matt Gage is on. Boston five, Blue Jays four. The pinch hitter is Bobby Dahlbeck for the left hand hitting Franchi Cordero. And it's a strike. On the outside corner, 0 and 1. No backdoor cutter, Dahlbeck, the pinch hitter, lots of power. Blue Jays just came off the road trip where they played six games. And Matt Gage pitched in four of them, so he's starting to earn a little bit more playing time for the Blue Jays. Jumps out in front of and two on Dahlbeck. Certainly done a nice job since he has come to the big leagues. Nine and two thirds, just three hits, one run. Tough night for Tim Mesa. And as the Blue Jays now trail, the Red Sox are looking to add on if they can here in the eighth. Slider taken low, two and two. He's pitched eight times and he's been scored upon just once in one of those. Gave up a home run to Baltimore. That's the only ga game that he gave up a run. He's been cutting that ball in nicely on righties where they can't extend. And missed up and away with a fastball. Now a full count. Verdugo at second. Vasquez at first. A run in already. Arroyo on deck. You know, the Blue Jays have been so good this year, Tabby, at cutting down on the walks. They've really, yes. they've been one of the best teams in the baseball. But a walk in the seventh, a Thornton walk to Cordero. Now he was replaced on a fielder's choice by Arroyo, but 
you know there wouldn't have been a runner on had there not been the walk and then a lead off walk by Mesa here in the eighth so two walks really figuring in in this Red Sox comeback and there's another one and this one will load the bases yeah, unfortunately he was ahead by a lot and then missed jumped ahead oh two just could not make that pitch now the Blue Jays are going to have to decide what they want to do with their infield corners will probably come in to go home middle about halfway line and caught by Espinal and they will double off the runner Vasquez out at second. What a huge play potentially as Santiago Espinal catches a screamer and they turn a double play to retire the side. The well, Red Sox do take the lead but Tabby this would have been two more. Yeah easily two more but he gets himself into position while the pitch is on the way. They finish off the double play and stop the Reds. Heather Danish is into the game. Matt Chapman leads it off and takes outside ball one. We saw Danish in last night's game for just an out. A couple other defensive changes. And Bobby Dahlbeck, after pinch hitting, he stays in the game at first base. Jackie Bradley Jr. takes over in center for Rob F. Snyder as Chapman looks at a strike. And Ref Snyder has gone to right, so Christian Arroyo is out of the game. Change up down and away, two and one on Chapman. One for three, a two run double in the first. Espinal is on deck, and Moreno behind him. Six, seven, and eight in the Blue Jay lineup. In the air to right field, but it's not deep. And Ref Snyder's there, one down. So now Danish will face Santiago Espinal, who is two for three tonight, drove in a run with a base hit back in the third. Remember, they've got Alejandro Kirk on the bench. Just in case they need him. Probably the hottest bat in all of baseball. And ball one to Espinal. Two and one now on Espinal. Jordan Romano is up in the pen, not throwing a lot, but he has made a few tosses. He has pitched in a week, and obviously the Blue Jays had hoped to use him in a with a lead in a save situation, and that still could happen depending on what happens here in the bottom of the eight. But it looks like Tabby Romano might be coming in one way or another because he's been off for several days. You know, it makes a lot of sense. You got to keep him sharp. He, he likes to work a lot. Preferably, the Blue Jays get a bloop and a blast, and he can come in and get a save. That's what Charlie Montoyo is hoping for. Three balls and a strike on Espinal. And strike two on a guy that I have to believe is the number one hard luck hitter in baseball last couple of weeks. We can't tell you how many pitches outside of the zone have gone against. That's another one right there. Yeah. Danish has that hard sinker and he read it out of his hand saw that it was coming inside took it and he was right that balls off the plate. 
But the pitcher gets the call. And now Espy's got to go back to work. And on the appeal, he went around and strikes out for out number two. Tyler Danish has walked just four batters all season long. He got a call on strike two and then throws a slider. That Santiago Espinal just cannot hold up on. He is hoping to pull that thing back and get the call, but he does not. Out number two. Kirk's got a bat in hand at the moment. But Moreno is going to hit. Toppy is the on deck hitter. So perhaps if Moreno reaches then Kirk hits for Tapia. Possibility. In there for a strike one and one a lot of movement on that two seam fastball from yeah. Tyler Danish. Yeah he can make the ball go sinking and sliding into the righty away from the righty. Been a little bit of an unsung hero for him this season. 381 earned run average in 22 games. Again, he pitched last night in the fifth inning, faced one batter, got him out. We didn't see him again. Now he shows Moreno a changeup, had him out in front, one and two. Boy, that's a tough one to take. <laughs> <laughs> He's in that two strike mode where he spreads out a little bit more. Has the bat off of the shoulder. And he sends it the other way. A nice play by Story. And from his knees, he'll throw him out to end the inning. So the Blue Jays go in order and through eight trail five to four. Coming in tonight one way or another but they had hoped it would be up a run or more not down a run as is the case now as the Red Sox come up in the top of the nine. Yeah, it was exactly a week ago in Chicago when Jordan threw an inning gave up a couple of runs in that one the ERA at 312 he's had 17 saves and 20 opportunities now out of the bullpen and he needs some work. So it's top of the order ref Snyder Devers and Martinez. Two hits and three runs driven in for Rob ref Snyder tonight the Red Sox lead five to four. It's even at 10 apiece. Each team has left seven men on. Manoa and Pavetta tomorrow night in the final game of the series. And fouled off one and two. Ref Snyder's done a good job since they brought him back up here. He's had some quality at bats. He's hitting for a high average. We just showed you the home run that tied up this ball game. Doesn't look like the player we saw when he was with the Blue Jays. And now he drills the ball to right center field, but it's going to hang up long enough for Teoscar Hernandez to run it down, one down. Another competitive at bat, but Jordan beat him with the fastball that time. So now Rafael Devers, who is one for four, had a base hit to left his last time up. And the Blue Jays into the 3 4 here with Romano in the game. Endeavors up as Espinal's gone out to right field. Matt Chapman has come in just a little bit. Remember in the first inning, he tried to bunt. 
I don't think he's going to be trying to bunt here. No, it didn't look like it there. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to put a number on that board. Fastball away at 98. One and one on Devers. Well, Kirk's got a shin guard on, so that suggests that he is in play. Will he bat for Tapia to lead off the bottom of the ninth? Did not go, says Jerry Lane down at third. Two balls and a strike. The fans thought he went. Fastball. He's challenging with those fastballs. And he holds up. Now in for ball three. A slider fouled off into the Red Sox dugout. A full count on Devers. Yeah, enough of those fastballs. He was missing with them. You see Devers shaking his head. Say, okay, I'm on your slider. Crowd tonight, 27,140. A little bit quieter lately than they were earlier on tonight when the Blue Jays held the lead. And he wouldn't swing, so Romano misses high for ball four. Fifth walk given up by the Blue Jays tonight. J.D. Martinez will be the batter. 0 for 4 with three strikeouts, 0 for 8 in the series. Yankees won again. They beat Oakland two to one tonight. The Yankees are now 55 and 20. Martinez drives a ball to left field. Guriel is there and will make the catch on the track for the second out. Yeah, he didn't get that. That was a breaking ball that stayed up. He didn't get it. Maybe off the end of the bat a little bit. Came into this game having had 17 career home runs against Blue Jays. There's the slider. Yeah, he catches it off the end of the bat. Still gave it a ride to left field. Mercurio has tracked it down for out number two. So with two down here, Xander Bogarts, who is one for three with a walk tonight. So again for the Blue Jays nine one and two scheduled whether that means Tapia or whether Kirk pinch hits remains to be seen. Devers eventually going to get up I assume. <laughs> He's different man. <laughs> he loves to play the game. Yep. Does Danish stay in. No one throwing in the bullpen looks like it. Two pretty talented young guys right there isn't it. Mm. I'd like to have him on my team. Both of them. Hit up the first baseline, but foul 0 and 2. The Red Sox got two in the seventh on the Ref Snyder home run off Trent Thornton, and then a run in the eighth off Tim Mazza to take a 5 to 4 lead. And sure looks like Alejandro Kirk. Is going to be hitting for Rymel Tapia to begin the bottom of the ninth. So if that is the case, it would be Kirk, Springer, and Bichette. And if anybody got aboard, that would be enough to get Guerrero to the plate. So don't go anywhere.
It ain't over yet. Mm -hmm. The 0 2. Didn't go. Bogart's always a tough out as now Romano backs off the rubber. One two on the way. And it's bounced foul up the third baseline. Good hitters can hit good pitching. This guy's a good hitter. Making some contact. Jordan trying to figure out where he needs to go to get an out. And he got him. Romano strikes out Bogarts. And it's on to the bottom of the ninth. The Blue Jays are down to run. Looks like Kirk's going to lead it off. Then Springer and Bichette. Bottom nine with the Blue Jays down to run. And strike one call. On an incredible run over the last six or seven weeks. Among league leaders in batting average and on base percentage. Just trying to get it started here in the ninth. And he will. And for the Blue Jays, he is by far their best pinch hitter. As Bradley Zimmer is going to come in and run for him. That at bat now takes him up to 400 as a pinch hitter. You throw that ball inside and he rips it in the left field. Good start for the Jays here in the bottom of the ninth. And he deserves all the high fives and handshakes and hugs he's been getting. He is something else. Here's that two seamer. He leaves it up. Quit snatches that ball. On the inner half into left field. Blue Jays after that feel they got a chance. So Zimmer now running at first nobody out and here's George Springer. Springer is one for four had a base hit to right center his last time up. They're playing him differently now they're not shifting on him anymore the second baseman story about ten feet to the right of the base. Yeah they saw where that base hit went last time right through the right side. Remember the Red Sox without their closer Tanner Houck unvaccinated did not accompany the team to Canada on the restricted list. So Tyler Danish trying to go two innings here for Boston. But he does have some support in the bullpen is that Hansel Robles. Mm -hmm. Yep. That is Robles pitched in last night's game. Two and oh on Springer. Guerrero a couple of spots away. He's starting to get ready. Bichette's on deck. You got to like how this is lining up right now if you're on the Blue Jays side of things. Speed on and the right guys coming up. And Danish, he had no intention to throw in a pitch. He was just waiting for time to be called. He was just trying to freeze George Springer at the plate. Freeze him out.
2 0 on Springer. And inside for ball three. Blue Jays have been known to let their veteran hitters swing away 3 0 if he feels comfortable. The set by Danish, the lead by Zimmer. And the 3 0 catches the inside corner 3 and 1. Danish sets. And the pitch. And that is ball four. So the tying run goes to second. That's Zimmer. The winning run. Springer heading down to first. Boy, what a great take on that slider just off the plate. That's probably going to be it for Danish. Alex Cora has seen enough. It looks like he's already made the move. And the Blue Jays will get a much harder throwing reliever coming in in Hansel Robles to deal with Bichette and Guerrero. Elite speed out at second in Bradley Zimmer. George Springer is the runner at first. And nobody out here in the bottom of the ninth. And a swing and a base hit into right. Here comes Zimmer. And this game is tied. How about the approach by Bo Bichette going the other way on the first pitch that he sees? Trevor Story, the second baseman, was shading him up the middle. Looking for the double play. Bo crosses up the defense, serves it into the outfield. Zimmer with that elite speed like you were talking about scores easily as Louis Rivera sends the tying run home. What an at bat by Bichette. Didn't try to do too much with that. Didn't try to be here. Just make good contact. A professional at bat. And now it's Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And they're on their feet here at the Rogers Center. Springer the winning run out at second. And outside ball one. Boy after giving up the lead in the late innings if they could walk this one off here. Laddie one for three with a walk tonight. The 1 0 outside ball two. I know you want to be the guy right here, but you've got to make him come to you. And we saw Springer with that approach. He didn't force anything. Yeah, he took his walk, right? Kirk, yeah. Springer, Bichette. Three outstanding at bats. The 2 0 on the way. Bounced in the hole and through. Here comes Springer. And the Blue Jays win it.
They find a way as they score two in the bottom of the ninth. And just good at bat after good at bat and a couple of balls that find holes to the outfield. And the Blue Jays pull this one out, Tabby. They win six to five. It all started with the at bat by Kirk getting a base hit. Springer with the walk. And then Vladdy making Robles come to him. He wins another game, another walk-off hit with Vladimir Guerrero, but the at-bats were professional at-bats. Nobody trying to do too much. Just do what you're capable of, and Flatty hammers that ball through the infield on the left side. Springer's going to score easily, and the Blue Jays have a huge comeback win. Was it ever. They were up 4-2, to two, down 5-4, to four, and then score a couple of runs in the bottom of the ninth. And now Vladdy's used to Dumping water, dumping Gatorade on other folks. He's going to get a bit of his own medicine here tonight, but he'll enjoy it as Vladimir Guerrero Jr.